Hey everyone, this is Aaron. I will be taking a vacation, at least from podcasting for a while. I hope you enjoy these rebroadcast episodes from our Hall of Fame archives. You can now listen to the podcast on a new Stitcher Radio widget right on our homepage at www e6s-methods.com. We've also finally added some purchase options on our product page, including some tools and templates that may be of use to you as a manager or consultant. Included is a donation slash sponsorship link with bronze, silver, gold, and platinum levels starting just at $10. Your purchase will help keep this program alive and free to listeners like you. Please check it out. And as always, thanks for listening. Welcome to the E6S Methods Podcast with Jacob and Aaron, your source for expert advice on lean, Six Sigma, and performance improvement methods. In this episode number 65, in the Eye of the Cash Holder, Part 1B, we continue our discussion of stable and capable processes with reference to customer or client expectations. Here we go. So that's stability. Stability is displaying only common cause variation and no special cause variation. And, and special cause variation is it called that just because it has a very low statistical probability of occurring by chance alone, less than mm-hmm. three in a thousand chance. Yep. So what about capability? So when hmm. I ha- when I say, Jacob, I have a CPK of one, what comes to your mind? One's pretty bad number, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was interesting. One used to be sort of the... Industry bare, standard. The bare minimum industry standard. It is based off of a three sigma process. If you have a CPK of one, you like you're like you're at least, you're just capable. Uh, anything below one was considered incapable. Poor. But mm-hmm. uh, you know that that rule of thumb is moving has been moving up. So now you might see customers demanding a one point three three minimum uh, acceptable CPK, and some of them maybe even. One point six six, mm-hmm. and depending on the industry, some of them might be even more than two. Yeah, you know, I saw I saw somewhere, um, and I'm not sure what would this equate to. Uh, that wouldn't be. They were. It was a seven and a half sigma program, which wow. I guess is related to pharmaceutical. And I, I was just going to say healthcare. Or I thought like it was that. a joke, honestly, because. It just it just seemed ridiculous because <laughs> in my experience, Six Sigma is ridiculous. I have not really, uh, for any process that was actually meaningful, I have not found that they achieved Six Sigma capability. But um, I mean, it, it depends on what you consider a process and what you're measuring it, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, although with today's example is a bad day, but... Uh, you know, typically when you ask somebody what's a Six Sigma process, I think the one that comes to mind the most is aircrafts taking off and landing. Mm-hmm. You know, you you want that to be at Six Sigma levels. If you consider all the aircrafts that are taking off and landing in around the world, mm-hmm. are they successful? Yes or no? Chances are you want the process to be a Six Sigma level or above. Sure, sure. You know, I mean, so it depends on what are you looking at and how are you measuring. Can you have things that are there? Absolutely. Can you... You know, is that far few and far between? Absolutely. You know, there's not going to be many that are not. Right. So yeah, no, that that is a good point. So yeah, uh, let's see what was I. So you know, a CPK of one is three sigma. One point three three is four sigma. One point six six is equivalent to five sigma, and a CPK of two is equivalent to six sigma, which basically means that the mean is six standard deviations away from the nearest specification limit. Mm -hmm. Uh, And these can be visualized using a normal curve plotted or a histogram with a normal curve superimposed. And that allows you to visualize, hey, what what does my variation look like relative to my uh, spec window? Got it. We have uh, an image in the show notes, um, actually for both stability and capability, uh, which shows that uh, you know a capable process is that one which is very skinny uh, little very little variation with respect to the width of the spec window and that an incapable process is the one that uh, is wide with respect to the specification window so we like to use the analogy hey your specification window is a garage right mm-hmm. and um You know, if you are trying to park a very large Mack truck in your garage, you're going to end up smacking the mirrors off and and scraping up the sides. Those are are your out-of-specifications. It doesn't fit. 
the variation in, in the width of that vehicle. It just doesn't fit in there. So you need to shrink that vehicle down, and a Six Sigma process would be equivalent to parking a motorcycle in your garage where you're, you can be on center, um, you can be a little bit off center, you can have a little bit of shift and a little bit of wiggle room, and you're fine. It's only going to be three... Point four in a million chances that you might not fit in there. <laughs> that you might scratch the bike on the on the side of uh, the garage, and and that would be probably due to some serious special cause variation. <laughs> if I had to guess, yeah. And I think you know the one other thing I'd like to highlight with that image that you have there is, I think the the cool feature about this image is both the curve normal curves that you have plotted in here mm. actually have the same center mid right so if, if you know if you are you know if you are in an organization if you are a person who is actually looking at just average all the time yes chances are you're probably not going to see what are the other issues that's caused by that right. or that's happening in your process you're just focused just on the average and you know it's the standard deviation that is actually equally critical, if not more critical, than where your center is. That's going to drive how many things do you have that's outside of the specification limits. Right. We talked about the dangers of only focusing on the average in, in a previous episode, and it's, it's exactly right. Because as far as as far as somebody looking at the average, they say these processes are behaving identically, but one of these has so much variation that you know they're experiencing probably. Uh, 20 percent fallout rate um, exactly yeah yeah so uh yeah it, it makes a huge difference and that's where the unhappy customers live mm -hmm. uh, you, you could have unhappy customers you could have unhappy uh business owners or stakeholders for your you know, own business because you're now reworking or wasting a whole bunch of money depending on what you're doing with all the things that are out of spec all right so we're going to get into a lot more detail on s s capability again and future episodes just want to introduce the idea of it and how variation relative to specification windows uh is important and so that people start to get that in a frame of reference before we move on because we're going to be moving on to a lot more detail and how all these are uh, how interconnected all, <laughs> how all these are in connected, interconnected we're going to do a lot more jargon and, and get into the uh the formulas and statistics around these so we talked about stable, we talked about capable, and these things can happen in four different combinations. It's possible you can have st a stable process without a capable process and vice versa. So how would you describe a process that is not stable and not capable? A process that's not stable and neither is not capable is probably the one which is in the case you've shown above, where it's the bell curve that's stretching out beside outside of both the specification limits, you're having a lot of lot of cases where you're falling outside of what the customer would accept. So it could be a case where you're having a lot of special cost variation. It could also be a reason where your the way your process is set up, you're just not going to be able to meet your customer's needs. Yeah, it's hard to tell from the histogram if there's special cause variation that's better seen in a run chart. But, um, you know, it could be the case. Basically, it's chaos, right? You mm -hmm. are often not meeting your customer's expectations, and it seems pretty clear that you are chasing your... <laughs> if you looked at the run charts, that you are seeing a lot of special cause variation, um, which is an indicator that you are out of control. And uh, there's... There's a lot of different root causes behind that, and uh, we can go into that as well uh, in a future episode. Yeah. You are listening to E6S Methods Podcast, brought to you by E6S Industries. Join us on our website at www.e6s-methods.com. Journey through success. Hey, Jacob, you remember when you used to work for me? Sure. Do you happen to remember how much money you were making back then? Yeah, I do. Yeah? And yeah. how much more you're making right now? I can do the math. And uh, how about that development plan that you and I put together during that time? Definitely gave me some perspective and gave me some direction on what I need to focus on. 
I found that useful. So far, I have a 100% promotion success rate for those people who are willing to work hard and were willing to work with me to create a customized career development plan, the E6S Pro Career Program. Three different levels, promotion and pathfinding level, which is career planning, customized improvement plans, resume refinement, and interview preparation. The next level down is targeted for those people who are they're just looking to prepare for their next move. And because it really does pain me to see unemployed professionals, I am offering a level called Help Quick, a free one-time resume review and revision for those who are unemployed and in the Lean Six Sigma quality engineering, project management, or science fields. So for anybody who wants more details and information, these can be found at www.e6s-methods.com slash pro career. And if you're serious about career advancement, contact me through the website. You'll be glad you did. I can watch for that. So what's not stable but capable? All right. So this is an indicator that uh, you have a specification that is uh, wide relative to your your variation of your process. So your process does have variation, right? It varies, um, but you have a very low probability of being out of spec, and that could be because you have very low variation. However, stability could still be an issue. So you are still may have very low variation, but you are still showing special cause variation, meaning you could be trending. You could have a, a pattern, maybe a sawtooth pattern or uh, trends or even... Um, up and down patterns that seem to be that flag as uh, different rules. So it just means that you're showing some non-random variation uh, and you might not really actually have control over this. It's an indicator that, yes, you have, in the history, you have statistically met your capability requirements, but it does not look like you have control over this, so you might actually have a problem in the future. Hmm. And it is capable because it's within the specification limits of the client, but it's not stable because it's showing some sort of special cause variation within the spec ranges. How about the other case where it's stable, but it's really not capable? Stable, but not capable. So it's only showing normal random variation, which is what we want, but the variation is just too wide relative to what the customer expects. And And I think this happens a lot. You know, you probably, for what you have your process, it's, it's performing within control limits. It's performing within what it's supposed to be. Unfortunately, what the client needs are, or what the customer is paying for you, is not within that spec limits. This is where we get into the question of, hey, my control limits and my specification limits, why aren't they the same? I don't, I don't understand that. So your specification limits is what your client actually is asking you to deliver to them or what you set up as the, you know, the extremities of what you will consider a pass or fail for a particular part. Your control limits has got nothing to do with your spec limits. Control limits are decided by the process. Uh, you do okay. not decide it. Your customers do not decide it. It's not something that you can set. They are determined by the historical variation of your process. Yeah. Yeah. Control limits is something I think you, we calculate based on the historical average and the standard deviation of what the values that you have for the process that determines uh, again, there's a formula behind it, which is what Aaron was mentioning earlier. We're going to get into all these fun details later, but that shows, you know, if you want to trigger an alarm, what should that control limit be for your process that can alert you as a process owner or somebody who's looking at this that something needs to be addressed or taken care of? And control limits are completely different from your specification. Limits. They're independent. Uh, compl- they are independent. Specification limits are decided by your customer or or the process, either internal or external customer, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, it's interesting in, in my history when we first got involved in Lean Six Sigma or when I was first exposed at least to the concept of capability, you'd have a process engineer say, okay, well, the specification is plus or minus 10%. I'm just going to put the control limit at plus or minus 8%. That way we never are out of spec what that person actually meant because you can't actually set your control limits. Those are determined by your data, right? 
yep. the, he, they were trying to set an internal specification, specification. or a, a a safety factor um, for the specification. That way, they caught the problem before it became a bigger problem or something like that. Incidentally, they just created a, a larger rework, a larger amount of rework, but... Uh, Oh, they were being cautious, but um, so internal specifications are not the same as control limits. Control limits are not something you set, unless, however, you have taken them and you have set them, fixed them based off of historical process variation, which we'll get into in another episode because there's dynamic control limits, there's fixed control limits, there's all kinds of things behind that, and right now, just say. Control limits are determined by historical variation. So then there's where we want to be. Stable and capable. What does that look like? That's the nice skinny gray one that you have in the picture. It is. You're centered around the mean, which is probably right in the smack middle of your spec. That's very you're, capable, right? Yeah, your variations are not too wide. Again, you're not anywhere close to the end of the specification limits. It's nice and skinny. It's just the way you want it. And you're only showing common cause variation. No trends, no steps, no points that are beyond three sigma. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's just hope we can get every process into that. Well, that is the goal, and that's the yep. purpose. So generally, we say before you can try to get a capable process, you need to first create a stable process because uh, as we go through the Lean Six Sigma tools – a lot of the statistical tools assume that everything is based off of the normal distribution. And if it's not based off the normal distribution, then some of the statistical tools uh, tend to break down. So we try to make sure our system is stable and then try to figure out, okay, how do we now make this capable? Mm -hmm. So, Jacob, can you do a quick recap? Definitely. I'll give it a shot. So, you know, we wanted to introduce the concept of stability and capability. So we talked a little bit about what's, what does stability mean. It's mainly a process that shows no special cause variation. And what we mean by special cause variation is uh, the data following any sort of or breaking any sort of rules that the Western Electric rules, which we'll talk in a different episode, uh, basically highlights. It's a statistical anomaly that is being captured and that somebody needs to be concerned about. Uh, a normal or a common cause variation or process variation is just things that happen naturally, which basically makes your process output random and uh, normal, uh, for lack of a better term, if you plot all your results out. So that's kind of what you want your stable process to display. Uh, another way where you can show your Stability is by doing some sort of process control charts. Uh, this way, uh, anything that breaks the rule, if you're using a software or if you can catch it visually with your eye, that's a very easy way to see uh, is your process displaying special cost variation continuously or consistently. Then we talk a little bit about capability. Capability was more, uh, mm -hmm. if you have a stable process, let's measure how is it performing and how consistent is your process doing things. And uh, we talked about plotting your graph or data in a histogram format and then trying to see what percentage of your histogram is actually falling outside the specification limits. If you're falling a lot out, you don't have a capable process. If everything's nice and tight and right in the smack middle of your specification limit, you have a happy customer. Mm -hmm. And then we talked about what are the different combinations, what might be some of the reasons why and, you know, again, with the common goal that you want to get everything to be a stable and capable process, that's what you want to aim and shoot for. There's a lot more to come from the sounds of it because we have lots of cool goodies to talk about in, with respect to capability. You got anything else, Jacob? No, that's it. All right, Jacob. Thanks a lot. Thanks for listening to Episode 65 of the E-Success Methods Podcast. Stay tuned for Episode number 66, where in the eye of the cash holder and all of society – Variation is evil. 
We introduce the Taguchi loss function in part two of this In the Eye of the Cash Holder series. If you would like to be a guest on the podcast, contact us through our website or tweet us at eSuccessIndustries. Join our discussions on LinkedIn, subscribe to past and future episodes on iTunes, or stream us live on demand with Stitcher Radio. Leave a five-star review while you're there. Find outlines and graphics for all shows and more at www.e6s-methods.com. Journey through success.